Good. Good. As it should be. All right. We're live into Facebook. It's working. Awesome. How exciting. What a beautiful day. Uh, It's all good. Today we've got amazing keynote speaker, coach, uh, coach, best-selling author, one of my favorite authors. One of the first books I ever read in real estate. Actually, it was the first book I read in real estate, Daryl, which I told you last time. Yes, uh, yes. He's with us today talking about really creating a win-win situation yes. when it comes to your clients in real estate. Yeah. And Daryl, thanks for being with us. But that's a great topic, especially right now when, when everybody has such heightened emotions. Yes, right? So well, the, the be- offers, you know, the, the, as you know, there's multiple offers across the board in most parts of the country. So that's why this is such a hot topic um, to help put these deals together, make them a win-win for people. And uh, yeah. I love it, dude. Well, before we start, are you still taking on uh, coaching clients? I, we are. Well, as a matter of fact, Trisha, we have, I do some one-on-one stuff, but there's a whole process for people to do that. But our power agent program, which is our, our coaching program is 47 a month and it's loaded with stuff. It's incredible. So we're, mm-hmm. uh, we're growing leaps and bounds and yeah, we're still, we're I love it. On. Dude. Yeah, man. Beautiful. Well, let's get right into it, buddy. Thanks for being on again. Yeah, my pleasure. Where do you want to start on this one? Well, listen, I'll just, uh, we'll do similar to what we did last time. I, I know that, which by the way, I said this before, I'll say it again, just to give you a little kudos uh, for anybody that's just seeing you for the first time. Thank you for what you do. You are such a hard worker. And, uh, and I know you really care about this industry. You care about what you do. I happen to see you, one of your recent videos on Facebook. It was one of those short ones. And actually, I think you, you were teared up on that the, the, most recently. I can't oh, remember what. Oh, yeah. I was like, I was thinking in the morning. It's like, you know, you have these <laughs> Yes, it was the morning. Yes. Right? Yeah. You yeah, have reflections in the morning. And I'm like, you know, I see so much crap going on. And it's like, it's just. It's just, you're in charge of your own day. Stop bitching, right? Yeah. Just, just make it make it a best day because it's your fault either way. Yeah. Yeah, when I saw that, I didn't watch the whole video because I didn't want to start crying too. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm Italian, so it's genetic. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, so I clicked off it uh, before I got too teary-eyed. But I was like, boy, this guy, he's got a good heart. But you, man, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for uh, Lab Code Agents and what you contribute to the, to the industry is pretty great. Appreciate you, buddy. All right. Well, listen, we'll do, so we'll do different, like I, I know we do a lot of interviews, but this one, you want me to jump into the material, so. Yeah, let's go right into it, dude. Let's see. Now, listen, I have also uh, some gifts like I gave last time, so I'm going to just shout out to everybody with these gifts. And uh, so here's a couple of websites. First of all, that top one there, it says, well, let's click at darylspeaks.com for it. says resource. There's some free stuff there for people. So if they go there, lab code agents, and he had, that's the other thing. We've got this trial. You asked about our coaching program. Yeah. So that's the website to get to find out more about the, the trial and the coaching. But Tristan, everybody, make sure if you decide to do a trial, you put in there lab code agents was the referring people. So that way we know that it's coming from you guys. All right. So let's jump into the win-win negotiation. Now, Trisha, what I like to do is start off with concepts first before I get into specific strategies. So the first concept is selling a house is a two-way negotiation, not a three-way, not a four-way. Because what sometimes, as you know, Trisha, what they want to do is they want to bring us into the conversation. The seller or the buyer, they want to make our commission as part of the transaction. And this is a dangerous place to go. You should never, the commission was agreed upon when the homeowner signed the listing agreement. Yep. The selling broker's commission was agreed upon when it was put in the, in the MLS. And of course, with the buyer agency, whatever you might've said when you, so anyway, we got to make sure we keep us out of the conversation. Here's the next thing okay. is use the commitment of the buyer and the seller to move the transaction forward. Now, Tristan, you've been, you've been around for a long time, so you know, that when you, when, you, when you start to stress about the transaction, making the transaction happen, it seems like buyers and sellers, they become less stressed, less committed because now the monkey's on your back. It's very odd how that happens. You know, Tristan, my best year of real estate was what, my last year because I was getting out of real estate. So when I was working with buyers and sellers, like if I was talking to a buyer, I'd be like, listen, you wanna buy this house? Great. 
If you don't, I don't care. I'm not the one homeless. You are. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the fact that I took the pressure off of me and I put it back on them. So it's very important that when we're negotiating, we keep people focus on their commitment to buying a house, use their commitment, their energy to move that transaction forward. Dude, that is, yes, man. Interrupt you because that is such a, you good can point. interrupt me. This is your show. I'm just a guest. <laughs> well, ahead, man. You know, that was, that was so good. I think that is an aha moment for me. I mean, we, we do it naturally, but those agents that struggle in this section is because they're trying to push so hard their yeah. prerogative, right? That was, dude, that was so good. I love that. that I, I, I got some more. I got a few other things. Moments. Just like one more or two things. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. You're right. Sometimes when we're, we're uh, especially successful agents, we forget. That's why there's a difference between teaching and being like, not all successful agents can transfer the knowledge because that's a different skill set. Sometimes we forget when we're in it, what makes us successful. But anyway, so I'm glad that was an aha. Here's the next one. Oh, 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 here's the next one. I'm sorry, I almost skipped over it. Number three is do your best to present your own offer to the seller with the listing agent. Now, you probably don't know this was coming, Tristan, but I am a big proponent of when you are on the selling side that you write the contract and you present it face to face with the homeowner and the listing agent. Now, I always get a lot of pushback from me. That's not how we do it. Multiple offers, ba 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 ba. But this is what I promise you, Trisha. I'm going to cover in this uh, right now. This training, how to do that when possible, okay? Because it's a powerful technique. Let me show you something here. This just was Tristan from one of our students a day ago. I just her name's Felicia. She's a power agent. And if you see, it says right there, wow, that was an amazing experience. My first time in 20 years presenting an offer to the seller with his agent on Zoom. The seller was really appreciated and appears he's going to accept our offer, even though that there's multiple offers and mine is contingent on selling a home. Thanks for teaching us, Daryl. Now watch this. This was a mo few moments later. I think it was the next day, Tristan. She, she puts up there, seller was very appreciative that I had the Zoom call with him and his agent up against five offers. Ours was accepted. It feels great being able to get the home for my clients. Much love. Okay. So this is a powerful, powerful strategy and technique. Let's go further with this. Okay. Now, Tristan, I have this up on the screen as far as the dancers, because what I want to say is that I'm going to teach uh, how to dance in negotiating, presenting offers. But every dance, like you learn the dance steps, but even though you know the steps, every dance is different. Why? Because you got a different dance partner. You got a different music. You got a different environment. You got a different beat. So there's no, it's, there's no like, all right, here's how you do offers all the time the exact same way. So let me go through the dance steps and then people got to customize their routine based on their style and their partner and et cetera. That is a so, good analogy. Yeah, that's a good analogy, right? Okay. Here's the first thing I want to say before I get it into the actual presentation. The value of us when we're on the selling side of presenting the offer to the homeowner directly, number one, everything is transparent. Mm -hmm. You know, you know this, Tristan. Sometimes if we're on the selling side and we give the offer to the listing agent, we don't know what's being done with our offer. We don't sure. know how it's being presented. We don't know really if it's being presented the way we were presented, they never met up. There's, there's a lot of, uh, there's not, there's lack of transparency. When we take our offer, we give it to the listing agent. Would you agree? Yes? A hundred percent. So it's actually beneficial to both every buyer, seller, and all the agents. If we're all on the same page and we're very transparent. So that's one of the benefits. The second benefit is the buyer is well represented because the, nobody knows those buyers better than the selling agent. So if the homeowner has a question about these buyers that's not on the printed form, it could be, you get it right from the, the horse's mouth. See, if I'm a listing agent, Tristan, a lot of my top power agents, top listing agents, they let selling agents present their own offers because we know it's actually better for the seller. It's better for the client. 
especially in multiple offers. Here's the third benefit. It's better for the seller and the listing agent because they can get the questions answered directly. I just said this, I'm being repetitive. The transaction can move quicker before the buyer changes their mind. And that's another thing we have to remember. Now, I understand we have multiple offers. It's different. But when you've got a buyer, the moment they write that offer, the, the stress anxiety clock starts ticking. And if they go to bed that night without an answer about their offer, they, the anxiety gets so great, right? The next day, you get that phone call in the morning that says, you know what? I, we changed our mind. I, I guess it wasn't meant to be, right? Because yeah. human nature is the thing that's causing the stress in their life. They got to kill it off. Get rid of it. Take it out. So it's really, we got to be like, listen, we can make as much money on a transaction as some surgeons. And it, it, listen, if, 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 if the emergency room pay, calls the surgeons, come in now. They don't care if they're on a boat and the fish, they get, they get dropped, right? They got, they got to go. That's how we should be. When we write an offer, it is urgent as soon as possible to present that offer. Hmm. Okay. Dude, that is, I think that's a mindset shift in a lot of agents because you, you've seen, and I've seen a lot of agents where they're like, ah, oh, wrote the offer, you know, well, it's, it's, if, I'll, I'll get to it in two days when, whenever I feel like it. And that's like the total opposite of how you should react. Absolutely. I mean, think about it. This is why, uh, you know what, here's what we have to think. Uh, uh, why do uh, homeowners want to be FISBOs? Why do they not want to work with agents? To save the commission is obviously one of the reasons, but another one is because they don't trust that we're going to have the same passion and conviction that they're going to have because they've got more on the line. So there's a, a trust factor that homeowners have in giving their listing to an agent. Are they going to work as hard as I would with my own home? So if our job, if part of our job is to get that property, so to bring a buyer in, this is what we're paying for. So we, we've got to act quickly. We've got to act like it's your mother's house or your own house. You want to put that deal together quickly. Okay. All right, let's move on. How to present the offer when you are not the listing agent. Okay, first thing I want to say is <laughs> the MLS now, I know we got all different states on this, on this call watching uh, live and, and afterwards. And it's very possible that wherever you are in the United States, you check your MLS, it might even state that you've got the right to present your own office. Let me show you uh, the, 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 the code over here. Oh, sorry, this is the MLS rule for the board that I belong to. Tristan, I'm from Long Island, New York. Nice. Yeah, over 20,000 realtors. This is one of our rules in the MLS. The cooperating participant, that's the selling agent, uh, is, uh, are not required to disclose, disclose the name of the purchaser nor any of the terms of the offer prior to the actual presentation. So that's the first part. It's alluding to, listen, if I got an offer on your listing, Tristan, I don't have to tell you right, right away until I get to present it. Here's the second part of this. And I'm not going to read the whole thing because that'll bore us to hell, but here's just the punchline. The cooperating broker has the right to participate in the presentation to the seller. Okay, now there's more to that, like, well, the homeowner can write a letter saying, I don't want to hear off, you know, I don't want to get lost in the weeds. There's other counters to this, but let's continue with the concept. And the concept is check your MLS. It probably states somewhere that you have the right to present your own offers. Right. Let's go to the next thing here. Number two. Tristan, this is powerful. If an agent adds to their offer that this offer is contingent on Tristan presenting this agreement directly to the seller. Oh, now, wow. let me, you, you, say that again, Tristan. I love that. Wow. I, like, yeah. I, like that. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to capture that. Wow. That was good. Now, this is good, right? Because okay. now you call up. If I, if I, let's say you call me up and say, hey, Daryl, I got an offer on your list. I'd be like, ah, it's great. Email it to me. Fax it to me. Yeah, send it. What do you got? And you go like this. Well, Daryl, listen, here, we got a little unusual situation here. I want us to work together. You see, these buyers have been working with for a while. They, I, I know the, the intricacies of them. And this is a really good offer. And they really wanted to make sure that I presented the offer with you to the homeowner. So they actually made the offer contingent i me presenting the offer to the homeowner. So what I like to do is set up a time when you and I can go over and do this together because it expires tonight. We want to make sure we get it done tonight. And, and I, now depending, Tristan, on where the agent is in the country, right? Like uh, some of them are doing offers on Zoom because of the virus. Some are doing it in person. So if you're doing it in person, I would say, hey, listen, uh, Tristan, let's you and I meet 
in front of the homeowner's house 10 minutes before the actual presentation. So that way uh, we, you can hear the offer in the car so you're not blindsided in the house in front of the client. You and I can go in together knowing what the number is. Is this making sense here, Tristan? I love it, dude. My dog loves it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that maybe it was an angry staff person you got. They're like, that was good. where's my pay? All right. By the way, Jake's still looking for his raise. I'm just telling you, he brought it up again. <laughs> you got to do something about this guy. I don't know what the... <laughs> We're texting right now. We're texting right now. <laughs> okay. Number three, if the listing agent insists not letting you to present your own offer, then request a statement from the seller that says that, hey, I know Daryl's got an offer, but I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so, so now this is a little, this is, now this is what I said about the dance earlier, Tristan, because I got my New York hat on now, because now it's getting a little, a little tense. So if I, so some of the people that are nicer parts of the country, you pull it back a little, you don't have to be as strong as what I'm giving you. You, you find your, your style of dance. But I will say, you can say it nicely if, if I've got an offer and the listing agent's pushing back, saying, no, Daryl, the homeowner doesn't want you to come over. Say, hey, listen, just so I can show it to my buyers, you know, because this, I don't want to have a legal problem with them and with you, you and them and blah, blah, blah. Let's get in a writing. The homeowner is aware that I, Daryl Davis, has an offer on their house and they're choosing not to hear it. So just get that over to me quickly so I can show it to the buyers. Makes sense. Kristen, what like homeowner is going to say, I don't want to hear the offer? Are you with me? Yeah, that's for sure, dude. I agree yeah, yeah. with you. All right. The, I just saw the whiteboard move behind you. That was a little freaky. There was a the <laughs> whiteboard. I saw this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dog grabbed it by accident. Wow, that's a, moving around. That's, that's a scary-ass dog. I hate to have him bite my <laughs> ankle. All right. So let me just show you the code of ethics we got over here. The stands up <laughs> Calling my dog. Well, now, listen, now you got to pick up the dog, Tristan. You got to show us the dog at some point. Is I will. You're gonna, you're gonna love it. All right, show me the dog because I, I got to see this, this, this terror. Okay, so NAR Code of Ethics, Tristan. A lot of agents don't know this. At the beginning of this year, they made some uh, changes to the Code of Ethics. Uh, this is one of them. Upon the written request of the cooperating broker, that's the selling broker, who submits an offer to the listing broker, the listing broker shall provide a written affirmation stating that the offer has been submitted to the seller or a written notification that the seller has waived the obligation to have the offer presented. So what I just said to do, it's actually now, which I've been teaching for the last 25 years, Tristan, but now this year they added it as one of the standards of practice to, uh, to protect everybody involved. Okay, let's go to the next thing over here. Be as strong as you want to be with this. Let me show you this little, uh, this little graph I put together, Tristan. Determine your comfort level. Mm -hmm. Well, let me first say this. So you've got to decide, not you, Tristan, obviously, the people watch. You've got to decide how aggressive you want to be with when you are faced with a listing agent who's pushing back, okay? Now, keep something in mind. For people that don't know me, I'm a listing guy. 75% of what I teach is how to list for sale owners and expireds and to do promote. So I'm a lister. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you are on the selling side. So when you're on the selling side, you want to give, you got to demand some respect. This is how I feel. But again, you'll do it to your level of comfort. You know, some of you are newer agents or not aggressive agents. You won't even uh, think to ask, can I present my own offer? And that's fine. If you want to continue doing it the way that you've been doing it, and that's faxing or emailing, you don't even want to ask, that's fine. There's some of you, listen, I don't know if I'm going to do everything that Daryl said, but I'm going to at least try to ask at least. You know, one of my top agents, Charles Mayone, he says, Daryl, I always ask. Even if it says in the MLS that I can't present, I'll still ask. Why not? Right? Yeah, Here's dude. the next thing. Ask with conviction to making this happen. So again, this is a little tougher now, right? So I'm gonna ask him to be a little tough. Now some don't take no for an answer. And then there's me, which is the last one, which is start making calls and stir some stuff up. If I find that I'm getting some real pushback. <laughs> Tristan, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll go as far as call, uh, going to a homeowner's house, say, listen, I got an offer, I wanna present it, your listing agent won't let me, I don't know. Maybe you gotta give him a call. I, if, listen, if I got an offer, I'm going to put that deal together. But that's me. So don't, 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 don't be like I, me. I, I like that, man. The very first time when I started, uh, it, my mentor at the time, he, he told me, hey, look, if you want to get an offer accepted, 
you've got to do your best to present it to that seller when you're representing the buyer. So yes. he took me through that whole process, sat me at the table with the sellers across from them. The thing that opened my eyes was when the seller had questions that they were a little shaky about because mm -hmm. you, you can't, you don't understand the offer when you just read it, especially yeah. if it's coming from the other agent. They don't understand who your client is. Yeah. They asked directly to, to my mentor and my mentor just said, Hey, look, it's easy. Don't even worry about this. This is how this works. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, this is brilliant. This is absolutely amazing. But then I didn't do it very much often after that. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I'm being truthful. Well, you know what? Here's, here's why I, me personally, Tristan, why I can have the, uh, well, the passion to present my own offer. It's not because I want to convince people or close people or uh, onto people. It's because I believe in my heart and in my soul, it's better for the seller that I present the offer because nobody knows this package better than me. It's a disservice, in my opinion, to the homeowner to give it to some person who doesn't know these people and doesn't know the, the, what's beyond the piece of paper. That's why I do it with such conviction because it's for the seller's sake and nobody else. So and anyway, all right, let's continue here. So be as strong as you wanna be. Meet with the listing agent in front of the house five minutes prior to presenting the offer. So you guys can work together. So I've already said that. The next thing is reciprocate. So this is real important too. So if an agent is going to start kind of demanding, or not, I don't want to say demanding, but um, hang on, I got, a, I got something pop up on my screen here. Let me get rid of that. Hang on one second. No problem. Um, if, if, you get, if you get somebody, um, you know, if you're the listing agent and you've got an agent who's got an offer, you should reciprocate. So we've already said that a couple of times. Okay, some miscellaneous tips. Call the listing agent prior to writing the offer. Tristan, this is good. So let's say I got a house. I know these buyers are going to want to put an offer and I haven't shown it yet. I may call the listing agent and I would build some rapport. I say, hey, listen, you know, let's say, Tristan, you're, you're the agent, right? I'd say, listen, Tristan, so I, I'm going to be showing your house at 2 o'clock today. I got these buyers. Man, they've been looking for a while. I think this might be their home. And you say to me, well, Daryl, you know, they, 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 we've got some other offers that are coming in. And so make sure it's a strong offer. I will, Tristan. I really appreciate you Give me a heads up. But, hey, let, tell me, just so I can put a great package together, what's the, the main thing this homeowner wants to accomplish? What's mm -hmm. the, the greatest part about it. I know money is always important, but is it time? Is it where they're going? So anyway, I'm going to try and have that, that relationship with you before I even start uh, making an offer and writing and calling. So find out what's important to the seller. And uh, second thing that you may want to do is have the loan officer of the buyers call the listing agent. So even if there is a commitment letter, um, They've got a pre-commitment. They've gone through that process. Sometimes that phone call from the loan officer to the listing agent can really make a huge impact because if the loan officer is the one that's going to be running this application, you know, again, let's hear it from the horse's mouth. Let the loan officer do a pre-sell to the listing agent so they feel comfortable because that's, I'm going to talk about this in a minute, Tristan, but you see, it's not just it's the whole package, right? Like the listing agent, when we're listing agents, we want to know if the homeowner is going to go into contract, essentially take their house off the market. I know we can still show it and write offers depending where you are in the state, but you all, we all know if something's pending, if this is already in contract, we're not too excited about showing that to our buyers because we don't want them to get excited about a house that they can't really buy. Yeah. So, right. So if we go into contract, we take it off the market as a listing agent, we want to make sure it's going to go to closing. So it's the whole package. It's the buyer's um, level of commitment, the money, of course, the money putting down, but the loan officer, the home inspector, it's all these people. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we can do is sell the whole package to that listing agent and to the homeowner, not just the price, not just the terms, the package, right? Okay. So let's go on to the next thing. Number three, don't just sell the price. In terms, validate the entire team, the loan officer, appraisal, home inspector. Look, I'm talking ahead of myself. I didn't even, I just said that very thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Number four, keep in mind, you may be working with that agent again in the future. So this is what I mean, but you got to be careful how strong you are. True. Right? You don't want to 
get argumentative, get uh, with this agent, because after that deal is done, you and the other agent are staying in town together, right? So you've got to also balance that, keep that in, in perspective. Here's the other thing. I, I don't know if this is in my notes, Tristan, but if, if I was, uh, where, where are you? Again, you're in California, right? Yeah, so, Southern California, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. <laughs> Los Angeles. Yeah. You're in New York, you're, I'm in LA. You know. All right, yeah, so we're both, you know, <laughs> city folks. So, you know, if I were in LA working with you and I had an offer on your listing, there's a very good chance that I'd be like, listen, if you told me, Daryl, listen, we can't do this offer. Like, I got to present it because this homeowner, they're, they're out of the country and they're a pain in the oop and whatever. I'd be like, sure, Tristan. Like, because I trust you. Because <laughs> yeah. you got a good reputation. So that's the other thing to keep in mind. If you're working with an agent who's got a good, and you, you can trust their integrity and they've got a good uh, work ethic, then, you know, you, you adjust appropriately. If you've got an agent, a listing agent, who listed a property that out of town, like it's a friend of a family, like how did he even get this listing? You may never see this yeah. agent again, right? So you've got you've to make these decisions. There's, a, right. there's a really good question in between here that- Yeah, go ahead. It's by Franklin says, it feels like this revolves around making a full price offer maybe. How does it go when you have a difference in opinion on value? And I'm assuming a massive one, right? But do you yeah. go over comps or how do you approach that? So, um, well, so let me see if I understand the question. So the offer is, uh, it, it's, he's, not, he's not saying the offer is below ask. What, what, yeah, uh, me, yeah saying it. Offer offers below asking price. Let's say it's significantly below, right? Maybe like five percent under in in the, in the market, like right now in our areas where it's pretty hot. Yeah. How, how do you go around presenting something like that? Or do okay, you, right? Yeah. So he, here's here's what I would do. There's a couple of things you can do. You can make it so. First of all, I would not push you presenting your own offer if that's not the culture of where you are. Like I'd be careful. If, 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 it's, um, if it's a below asking price and the property is worth the asking price, like it's a low bull offer. Like you don't want to go to, to war over a bad offer. Is my no. Point. Yeah, got it. So be careful. All right, that's number one. Now, let's, that's not your question though. The question is, what if you've got a listing and the offer is below asking, but the offer is fair market, like the homeowner's out of whack on the list price? Okay, in that scenario, what you can do is, number one, you gotta use the commitment of the buyer and the seller to move the transaction forward. How committed is this buyer to buying this property? Are they willing to buy it even if it's gonna cost them an extra 100 bucks a month? Which is, by the way, we've gotta keep that in its perspective. You see, the pricing of a house today has nothing to do with what it's going to be tomorrow, next year, 10 years from now. Like if, let's say you buy, follow me on this. Let's say you buy a house for $500,000 and uh, maybe it's over, you know, 20 grand. Maybe it's worth 480, but you plan on staying there for 10 years. In 10 years, that house may be worth three quarters of a million dollars. So what does it matter? 480 or 500, because you're not going, you're living in the, from the future of where the value is going to be. Am I saying this correctly, Tristan? A hundred percent, dude. It makes sense. So, but here's what we are living with right now. It's the monthly payment. So, so 480 to five, what's the monthly payment? Is it seven hundred my way? Is that like $125 a month? So you've, that's the question to ask yourself. Don't get, get hung up at 480 and 500. Is this house worth losing over $125 a month? If it is, then it's not the house for you. So that's, that's the first part. The second part is the appraisal. What you can do is part of the offer is make a deal saying, listen, I think we're over on the price, um, but I'm willing to pay whatever the appraisal comes out at plus $5,000 more. That's a fair deal now. Now I'm paying five grand more than what a bank appraises for. it. I'll have to come out of my pocket that extra 5,000, but we actually will lean on the bank's appraisal to determine what the real value is. So that's how, uh, that's my answer to that agent. Did that help there? Like, think? Yeah, that definitely helps, man. I like that. And okay. there's a couple of other questions, but I'll go after because it's okay. something else. All right, cool. Let me go through. Oh, remember this. The, this is about making a difference in people's lives, not the money they spend or they receive, meaning they receive the seller and the buyer what they spend. The point I'm trying to make here, Tristan, is 
Okay, so just give me two minutes to to do a little woo woo. This is part of our power agent program. What we teach our power agents, we don't sell people, we serve people. We don't close people, we coach people. And one of the things Tristan and I say to our coaching members is that why is somebody selling? Nobody sells a house just to sell a house. They're selling their house for a reason. They're going to their next level in life. There's there's a bigger thing involved here. It's not about this house that they're selling. It's about their next chapter in life. They're going from point A to point B in their life. And what we do as agents is we help people get to the next level in life. Selling the house is not the end result. Selling the house is a means to an end. Same thing when it comes to buying a house. It's not about just buying a house, it's about buying a home where we're going to create memories, our shelter in home, where we're going to be staying for the next several years, right? What if we had to go through this coronavirus again? Is this the type of house you can see yourself sheltering in? This is what it's about, creating memories. And sometimes, Tristan, where we mess things up is it, it becomes about the money. It's about the two, few, few thousand dollars or it's about a refrigerator. I love that about the refrigerator. Oh, I thought the refrigerator was, was staying. Oh, it's not. But we, he, but we want the refrigerator. People are arguing about a refrigerator. Sellers like, no, it's a family heirloom. Come on now. So we have part of what we do as agents is to help people stay committed to their next level. So when we don't get lost in the weeds about the money. Your job is not to get people the best deal. Your job is to get them their home or the next level. Does that make sense, Tristan? Dude, that's really good. I like that a lot. Okay. I know you would because you got that soft side of you I learned about you. (laughs) All right. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Let's talk about writing the offer, and then we're (laughs) going to go to the questions over here. So when you're writing the offer, real quick, Stand in the commitment to them. I'm going to go through this part quick because I want to get to those questions. Stand for the commitment to owning this home, meaning you're going to confirm the monthly payments. Don't sit down and say, oh, what do you want to offer? Like, don't get it trying to save them 20 bucks a month, right? We already covered that. Let me get some information. What's today's date? That's a great way to start writing on the form. You ask people, let me just get some information. What's today's date? They tell you the date. That gives you permission to start writing. Keep them involved. You don't want to have silence. Hand them the pen if it's in person. And then you ask the spouse a question because you're distracting the spouse while the other one is signing, which is a great little technique. And then the last thing is have the seller buyers write a love letter to the sellers. Now, I'm going to spend just a minute on the legal aspect of this because Tristan, I've been teaching this technique for over 30 years. I would like to say that maybe I started it. I don't know, but I've been teaching it for 30 years, the love letter. And now I'm getting more pushback from these legal agents, you know, agents who love the legal thing. Like, you watch this. Here's what they say, Tristan. They'll say, but Daryl, the buyer cannot write a letter because the seller, if they can get sued for discrimination, if they don't accept the offer, blah, 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 blah. Listen, I've never heard in the 30 years I've been teaching this, I've never heard an agent or, or, or a buyer getting sued because they wrote a love letter and they didn't get their deal accepted. But I will say this if you want to play it safe. The fair housing, the federal says you can't discriminate with race, religion, national origin, sex, blah, 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 blah. And then every state has additional ones like New York. The additions that they have is age, marital status, military, sexual orientation, and gender identity. That's a new one recently added over the few <laughs> yeah, yeah. years. So it's interesting, right? We keep growing as a country. But in any event, here's the point that I have here is what you could do if you're concerned about fair housing is the letter would not contain any of these items. The buyers would not reference their race or if they're married or children. I mean, if if you take everything out, it's gonna be a really weak letter, unfortunately, but I am a fan of still writing the letters from the heart and not worried about this. But that's for the people who are like legalese people. Let me show you, Tristan, some real letters from my students. They had a buyer write this, Dear Mr. and Mrs. DeWare, as I present this offer, we'd like to thank you for considering us as buyers for your home. We've looked at many houses, but none of yours had the same feeling yours has. Along with meeting our needs as a family, your home is filled with the love of 27 years. We all had the sensation that we were being hugged when we walked in. The children who obviously don't understand the process of negotiations, they've already chosen their bedrooms. We have, of course, told friends and family, I like this next part, about your home and they're keeping us all in their prayers. It's always good to throw a little God in there, Tristan, because then you're messing with the big one. For this reason, we feel confident that we can reach an agreement with everyone uh, that's comfortable with, no matter what the outcome is, we're grateful to have been considered to possibly be the next family to be raised in the warmth of your home. It, it, what happens here, Tristan, it humanizes the buyer 
homeowners sometimes they look at a house as a as a family tree like mm -hmm. the deed they know who owned the house before them and who owned it before them they want to transfer it to somebody who's going to appreciate and love the home this Very is a powerful true. technique tristan in my power agent she said she had multiple five offers hers got accepted and hers had a contingency the other didn't why because my power agent humanized the buyer with the seller man dude that is so so good question from steve on this uh, specifically Go ahead, man. Don't, don't you include a photo of the family or yes, no? Absolutely. I think you could do that. I think if uh, another funny little bit that you could do is if the buyers have a, a house to also sell, taking a picture of that house and, and showing that to the homeowner, this is the house that they're selling to. There's some kind of homeowner to homeowner bonding that happens. I've seen it happen so many times where the homeowner goes, oh, that's their house. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, that, they should have no problem. You know, so yeah. So to answer that question, yes. All right. All right. Perfectly. Is there another question you want to ask? Yeah, but hold on. Isn't that letter? Okay, here we go. Kathy, Kathy Rebergs asking a good question, right? Kind of on the legal side. Isn't that letter stating a familial class? Yeah, like I said. So if you wanted to be concerned about fair housing, you would take everything out that references fair housing items. But if you did that, you're going to have a letter that says, Dear homeowner, my name's John. Take my offer. Love, Daryl. You know, it's not going to be a very powerful letter. So part of you can't humanize people without talking about the human being. <laughs> yeah. So me personally, listen, this is me. Uh, I, Tristan, not everybody. First of all, uh, let me just cl clarify something too here. Uh, you should, you got to do whatever your broker says to do. So if your broker told you not to do a letter, don't do the letter. Uh, all right. So there's that. Now my style is I would do the letter because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's sometimes, you know, we're too litigious. It's about people and uh, that's all. And I've never heard any agent getting sued. So the, well, dude, also, if, if you're concerned, so for those of you that are listening in and are concerned, there's also other angles that, that you can take. That was a good letter, but you can also say, instead of putting in, god right which we we leave in some cases but instead of putting that in just focus on the emotions that everybody felt while they were yes. in the home, right yeah and that still can come across as wow these people really love our home there's a connection right that's if you're concerned on the legal side but if not you know bring in as much as you can otherwise i'm going to show you one other letter because i want to try and make you cry tristan <laughs> 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 Because let me tell you something. I've been reading this letter for 25 years. And so that's how old this letter is. And, and I remember the first time I read it live in a class because it was a real, it's, these are real letters. These are real people. And I'll never forget what happened 25 years ago. Here's the letter. Dear Mr. Rewalski, I'm writing, hoping to find you in the best of health. Health also to introduce my family and myself. We have four small children in need of a home, your home, hopefully. We reside at 3341 Fourth Avenue. I don't know if you're familiar with Fourth Avenue, but it's not an avenue you enjoy watching your children grow up. We live among drugs, guns, and also killing. I noticed the fence yard in which I've been dreaming of because I have grandchildren in which I would love to see enjoy your big backyard. So I can't offer you a whole lot of money for your home, but I can promise you I will love and take care of it if given the chance. Come on now, man. Wow. That's, that's, that's beautiful. That's real awesome. people, real sin. You yeah. want to know something, Tristan? Those sellers, they didn't even counter that offer. They just accepted it. I'm telling you, man, this is what we do. We bring people together. And sometimes we lose that. We get so bogged down in the numbers and the, all that and the bickering and blah, blah. Let's bring people together, right? That's what we do. That's I power. That, man. All right. That's let's, uh, do you have any other questions yeah. that you want? Just go ahead and interrupt me now. All right. Now I got one from earlier. Whitney says with, oh, what is it went to full print? Let me read it first so I can make sense of this. You're right about your discovery through inspections. All right, Take if there's a problem with the home inspection and you're sending a request for repairs out, yeah. would you recommend that you present that request for repairs in person? Kind of going along the same lines okay. as you presented that? Yeah, so if you're gonna renegotiate the transaction, depending on, again, this is a dance. If you feel that it's not a slam dunk that it's gonna be addressed and taken care of well, then I would do face to face. If you feel it's a minor thing and it'll be easy, then I make a phone call and just cover it that way. Um, I will tell you, this is one of the tips I have coming up later, Tristan. 
which is um, I suggest that when we write our offers that we say it's subject to the home inspection for major defects and then we define major defect. It's where any one item costs more than X dollars to repair. So what I would do is I would present it to the homeowner. I say, now, Mr. and Mrs. Hanahana, of course, my buyers are going to do a home inspection, but they're only looking for major stuff. Like, you know, the boiler, the roof, the foundation. Like, they're not going to nitpick and come back and renegotiate with you. As like, for example, not for another Mr. and Mrs. Hanahana, I noticed a little leak in the, in the ceiling over there. They're not going to ask you to fix that. They're gonna... Now, Tristan, when you do that, here's what happens, because that homeowner, they know all those little nitpicking things that stain in the thing and the, and the broken door, and they're worried. Oh, I hope these buyers, listen, Bernice, we've been living with that broken door for 27 years. I didn't fix it for us. I don't want to fix it for these, Mama Maluk. <laughs> so they actually are role-playing before how they're not going to fix things, right? So now if you're sitting across from the homeowner and you're saying, look, Mr. Mitt, don't worry. They're looking for major stuff. That little broken thing. Then the homeowner gets relieved. They're like, oh, okay, thank goodness. Does this make sense here? A hundred percent, dude. I, I love how you're, you're setting that tone from the very beginning. Uh, question on this. Yep. From Sean uh, saying, uh, I always have clients write love letters. Really works. Uh, yep. And then he's saying, look, I, I've driven from all over to get to the listing agent and do, do presentations. Now, how long do presentations usually take if we're gonna go in person presenting it to the seller? Okay, so um, I'm gonna show you. It's gonna take you maybe 20, 30 minutes. And I say I'm more on the longer side because Tristan, my commitment is when I do this, is I wanna get my offer, I wanna leave with an offer either accepted or dead. So in other words, when you present your offer, you want to hope. Now, multiple offers is a little bit challenging, but what I'm going to try to accomplish here is after, if the homeowner doesn't like this number, there's something about the offer, what would they, what do you need to tell me yes now for these buyers? Because I don't want them to go to bed tonight without winning this house. Tell me, what is it that you've been thinking about this since you listed the house a month ago, every night, you know what number work, what, tell me what works for you. And they're going to tell me, then I'm going to hang on a second. Then I'm going to call the buyer in the other room. I'm going to say, the buyer, come up to this. No, yes, I come back to the home. Money. Yes, we got it. And bidding, it's done. So I want to put this deal together tonight. Okay. All right, let me, let me go finish these slides real quick. I'm going to try and go quick here, Tristan, because I want to leave time for more questions. You want to put an expiration time on the offer, so that way it creates a sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. You uh, Code of Ethics, Standard Practice 1-6 says, yes, all offers must be presented as quickly as possible. Again, you should know your laws, your MLS and the NAR, because that'll help you with your conviction with the listing agent. Remove the contingency, sell the house or other contingencies. Remove the mortgage contingency if you have to, if the buyers want it bad enough, okay? Now, that's not going to say the buyer is not going to apply for a mortgage, but the contingency will be taken out. If, let's say, you do have... Um, a, a buyer who's got a house to sell, put in there that the buyer is going to list their home with you so that way you're managing both sides of the transaction. So Mr. Mazzana, you don't have to worry that the house is not going to sell because I'm going to make sure it happens. I'm managing both sides. I already talked about the engineer inspection that we want to make sure that it's uh, major defects that it, and you define what a major defect is so we're not nitpicking. Okay, next thing is, okay. I'm doing this all in one breath over here. Consider making the offers about a quirky number, like it'll stick out in the mind of the seller. For example, maybe put an offer in at 345, 255 instead of 345 even. That extra money, some psychology says that it looks like it's more real. It looks like it was thought through. This is an example of how it actually looks like it's a lot more money. 1850 doesn't sound as good as 1905. It's, a bit, it's not a big difference, but it sounds bigger than what it actually is. Um, add out a bump out clause. Those of you who don't know what it means, it means that if, uh, if another buyer comes in while you're in contract and they have a better offer, that the first buyer has the right uh, to try and match that offer so that way the seller feels okay accepting your offer. Pay the seller if your mortgage does it, it gets denied. Like you can even put that in. 
Listen, contracts, you can put whatever you wanted. If let's say I'm saying how good these buyers are, these buyers are going to get the mortgage. It's a done deal. Don't worry about it. Listen, I'm so, we're so confident that if it doesn't happen, Mr. and Mrs. Hunter, Hunter the mortgage, they're going to pay you $5,000 just to say I'm sorry. I love that, dude. Yeah, man. Especially, especially in a market like this, right? Well, it's in, in yours and my market right now, it's super hot. So Super hot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's the next thing. Add that the buyer, I love this too, Tristan. Add that the buyer will make two mortgage applications at the same time, one with their lender and one with the listing agent's lender. Ooh. Is this going to cost the buyer a few extra dollars? Sure. But we're in it to win it, baby. If you're in a multiple offer situation, put up or shut up. <laughs> so this is what we're going to do. <laughs> I love that. All right. Here's how to present the offer. And then we're going to open up to questions. So I'm going to go through this really quick. Um, before you finish, uh, oh, oh no, I'm sorry. This is the preparation to presenting the offer. I apologize. Okay. Oh. Um, so before you present the offer, you want to make sure that the buyers, you want to address buyer remorse, right? You don't want the buyers to cool down. Yeah. You know, Tristan, I'll show you some, a couple of things we give our power agents. We, this is the, the, our program has hundreds of forms and flyers. This particular form shows a buyer the whole process of buying a home using the monopoly board, right? So we're gonna show them where we are in the process that helps manage their anxiety. Here's another one. Um, Tristan, let me, let me cut to me for a second here. So um, one of the things you, you, you may not know about me, Tristan, I had a really bad childhood growing up, right? So, um, you know, I've had some success and so we want to do something for children. So I got a hobby to helping children, okay? And um, so we create our own charity, America's Hope for America's Children. And part of my revenue goes into our charity and we give it out to anything dealing with kids, emotional, not physical like diabetes, the emotional stuff, right? Okay. Anyway, one of the studies I found, Tristan, check this out, that children who live in a home that's owned versus a rental, they have less behavioral problem, better English grades, better math grades, more likely to go to, uh, to finish high school, go to college. So we put together this chart. This, this study was based on Duke University, American Psychology Association. So we, we give this to our power agents and said, listen, give this to your buyers if they have children and they're renting, saying, listen, you're not just buying this house for yourself, you're buying it for your children. This is very powerful what you're doing. So again, Tristan, it reminds the buyers that it's, we're, 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 it's not about negotiating, getting great deals, it's about buying a home for the family, right? Mm -hmm. And here's one other. This over here, there's multiple, we created an e-guide on how to deal with multiple offers. This e-guide is given to the buyers and it's also given to sellers. Uh, this is a bonus we're gonna give your people when they go to that website. We'll talk about it at the end, all right? So the, everybody's gonna get a copy of these slides. Isn't that good? Dude, I love that. All right, okay. Plus, I, I just put up the link there, geraldspeaks.com forward slash trial. So. All right, good. Listen, anybody that goes to, where is it? That, tr that website right there, make sure you put in lab code agents and you're going to get a copy of the slides. You're going to get that e-guide. Okay, so handle the buyer's possible remorse. Then call the listing agent to set up the face-to-face -face conversation, right? Very simple, that's basic. Then ask the listing agent about the seller's commitment. When you're talking to the agent, try and get a little bit about the, the homeowners, where they're moving to, when they're, they get their buy, and why did they pick that area. In other words, the more we know about the sellers and what they're trying to accomplish, the better we can speak to their commitment. Okay, that's the whole point here. Okay, now here's presenting the offer. It's eight steps, Tristan. When I'm done with this, then we're going to go to the, the questions. So, does that sound good? Okay, all right, here's the next thing. Um, step one is acknowledge the listing agent in front of the seller. So let's say, Tristan, you and I, you're the listing agent, and I'm talking, Mr. and Mrs. Hana Hana, I go like this. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hana, before I get started, I just want to say, you know, of all the agents you could have hired to market your house, you, you picked, a, in my opinion, Tristan is one of the best, most respected agents in our multiple listing service. He is such a hardworking individual. He's got an incredible team, great company. It's because of his effort is why I'm even here with an offer. So Tristan, it's my honor to work with you. This is okay. good, right? Dude, very good, very good. Yes, because now, stop. Yeah, right now anything I say, Tristan's gonna be like, Daryl's brilliant, listen to him. You know, so now I'm not adversarial 
with the listing agent. Second thing is explain your job because the homeowner, they may think that you're the adversary, you're the bad person. Say, no, listen, my job, Mr. and Mrs. Anahana, is to manage the buyer side of the transaction. Tristan manages your side of the transaction. But Tristan and I have the same commitment, essentially, and that's to help get this property sold and help you meet your objectives. As a matter of fact, according to the National Association and the Code of Ethics, I have to be fair and honest with all parties. So I don't want you to think I'm here to convince you to do anything you don't want to do. On the contrary, I want to help you get what you're committed to, uh, as long as it doesn't hurt the buyers. Okay. The third thing is discover the sales commitment. If you can, try and find out where they're moving to, why they're. And if you can, work in there. Wow, I feel like we made it here just in the nick of time. If they're moving to another state and they want to get there in a couple of months, say that, boy, I feel like we made it here just in the nick of time. This is awesome. So that way, again, we're building a relationship with the seller. We're getting clear about what their goals and commitments are. We've got eight steps. Step number four, humanize the buyer. Let me share with you, Mr. and Mrs. Hanahan, a little bit about these buyers, where they work, and the children, the whole nine yards. And then you read the buyer's letter out loud. Very mushy, wonderful experience. Step five, Tristan, you should see your face right now. Are you reading or are you confused with? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the questions. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is this is why I look over to the screen and you're like this. I was. I was like, does that question make sense? I'm like, I have to decipher questions while you're presenting. <laughs> no, I, don't, uh, I don't know if people can see good. your face. I can see your face and I'm okay. like, oh, am, I, am I not teaching good right now? You're and like, Kristen you're like what the hell? Did I not yeah, make right? sense to Kristen? <laughs> if, if Tristan's not following me, I'm in trouble. I'm I got burning. You, bro. I I'm got crashing you. and burning over here. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> okay, let's go on. Go back to this thing. All right, so I, I won't call you out again on that now that I know that you're reading. Um, price in terms. Okay, everybody get serious with me. This is very important now. So what we just did is we humanized the buyers. We want to now, we're going to present the price in terms of the homeowner, but we want to explain to the homeowner that the terms are as important, if not even more so, than the price. And you might even say to a homeowner, sometimes homeowners make the mistake, they just look at the price. Let's say you were getting $20,000 over price, over asking price, but the buyers, they're asking you to hold back 20%. Their FICO score is 500. My point is you'll never get to closing. So don't look at just the price, look at the terms, Mr. and Ms. Hanana. Let me share with you the terms about these particular buyers. And this is where you push. The packet, oh, sorry, you push the package, the large deposit, the pre-commitment letter, the closing date that coincides for the homeowner, they're buying it as is. They're gonna check the house for major stuff, but not the little nitpicking stuff. And you've got, they're gonna make two mortgage applications. They're removing the contingency, whatever. So this is where you, here's what you wanna do. You wanna push that, the package, separate from the, the price, where at the time when you're done, the homeowner goes, wow, this sounds great. See, then it's the prices. Oh, yeah, by the way, this is what they're offering. So the, what you're presenting is not the price. It's the terms, the package. Now, when you do that, boy, that's going to put you above any other agent. All right, so let's yeah, Nobody it. does this. Nobody. <laughs> thank you. All right, let's finish this up. Number seven and number eight, and we're good to go. Show your MLS list price to sales price ratio. Every MLS has different ratios. Like maybe they're getting, let's say, you know, your MLS average is 97.2% of asking price. And this offer is 98.5% of the asking price. So you're saying to the homeowner, so you're actually way above the MLS average. And so that's a good thing. And if somebody were to ask the question, what if your offer is less than the MLS average, then don't do that because don't say my offer is worse than the MLS average. The last part is you want to recap the positives, get their signature, and then party, but make sure you have a mask on. Thank you very much. That's, uh, that's the end of that. <laughs> Dude, you know, I'm going to, uh, a couple of things that I learned that I was taking notes on. Uh, number one, as you, were, as you were talking about the presenting in person, we, we had a situation where, we were representing this client who's coming down from New York, by the way, which is cool. Uh, purchasing a home in Malibu, all cash, 10.5 million, right? Easy. Nice. And, but here, here there's, a, there's a situation all the time that arises. 
and doing the presentation in person or at least attempting to, right, uh, really bridges the gap between both agents. And, and you, you talked about it, but I want to reemphasize it because what happens is you said during this conversation that we're having, you said, talk to the agent first and let them know beforehand, hey, why don't we meet up or why don't we talk about the presentation? Mm -hmm. yeah. Go over it so you fully understand it, yep. right? And then like we're both on the same page together. Yep. I think that is such a strong key point to succeeding in this business yep. because we did that ahead of time on a really complicated offer. Because our client sent it to his attorney, his attorney came back with 27 points that we had to add to the listing presentation. To the, sorry, to the, to the residential to the, purchase agreement, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. And I'm like 27 freaking points on a $10.5 million property. You have both big egos on both sides, right? Yep. So let's come together on terms and let's both be on the same page agent. Yeah. So we did that, hashed it all out. If I didn't do that with the agent, the agent would have been like, you know what? Go to hell, screw you. I'm not gonna work with right. your client, right? Exactly, exactly. But that's such a strong point that, that you brought up and it's often overlooked. And I love that, that you brought that up, dude, so. Cool, very cool. Yeah, the attorney, we, we have, we have uh, you know, there's certain parts of the countries where it, uh, they ha you have to work with the attorneys and and sometimes they there's so much frustration that they have they're getting paid less than probably what you're getting paid but yet they they spend more money to go to school so there's that they got to feel like they got to justify their fees so then they got to come up with this 27 points oh no 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 we got to fix this so that yeah that could be a challenge so true <laughs> all right questions for you here we go go ahead all right, uh, your, oh, you already typed that one in. That was easy. Your uh, charity, America's, oh, America's Hope, Hope for, for America's Children. America's yep. Children. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Marty's saying, where do we click to get the slides? Let me put up the link. It's a trial, right? That trial link? Yeah, so what, what that is, is just so we're clear and transparent, our membership is 47 a month, but there is a 30-day full access, unrestricted trial for $5. That's what that link is. And if they say there are lab code agents, there's a field on the order form that says who referred you, they say lab code agents, then they're gonna get the additional of these slides plus that ebook that they can customize with their logo and stuff to give to their clients about multiple offers. So that's a bonus gift that we're given for okay. your people. All right. I love that. Thank now, you. What they could do is if they sign up for the five dollars, they get all the free stuff. They can cancel the next day. So that's how they can rip us off there for five dollars. <laughs> so, Did you listen? That's how you can rip their off. <laughs> all right. that's, <laughs> that's my <laughs> pitch. Go ahead, rip. No problem. I don't have a problem. Rip me off. Rip Jessica me off. Morrison says, such a good script. Jessica, what's up, Jessica? Always a huge supporter here. Um, all right. Sean says, I usually do a cover letter. Uh, if not presenting it in person. So that's... Uh, yeah, so no, that that's a great... That's a, a, a next best thing is I've seen some agents do that, Tristan, where they'll write a really narrative, narrative, that's important, right? Narrative cover letter to the package, hoping that the listing agent will read that to the homeowner or give it to the homeowner. So you can try and recreate the the uh, the package and, and um, humanizing the buyers with a cover letter, yeah. I love it. All right, there was one person here, said, Tina. What's up, Tina? I started a trial with the last webinar you did. Will I still get the slides? Uh, oh, that's great. Um, do me a favor. If you go, who is that? What's the name? Tina Clark. Tina, all you have to do, Tina, is uh, go to darylspeaks.com. You'll see that little chat button. There's a live person there. And just let uh, Sarah or let the team know, hey, I just joined through Lab Code Agents. Can I get a copy of today's slides? Bada bing, sh it'll get emailed to you before the day is over. I love it. All right, Joanne. Um, Joanne, I don't know how to say your last name. It's Cadu or Cadu. It's a cool last name, but I got that it. That is cool. Right. Either one. Yeah. All right. To clarify, you're saying to talk over the offer price terms with listing agent prior to sending the sign to offer. Okay, great clarification. Yeah. What you want to do, the main, the main objective here, what I taught you is that you want to present the offer to the homeowner with the listing agent, okay? That, therefore, you do not want to tell the listing agent what the offer is before you're across from the homeowner, because if you 
email it or tell them over the phone, they're going to simply call the homeowner and present it, and there's no point in you going anymore. So you tell the agent, listen, it's subject to me presenting, and I want to tell you now, if they ask you on the phone, listen, like Tristan, if you ask me, oh, Daryl, tell me what the offer is. I promise not to tell the homeowner. I'd be like, oh, Tristan, you know the homeowner's going to ask you, and, and, and I don't want you to lie, tell them you don't know. So I'm going to help you out by not telling you. <laughs> but here's what okay, so that way you really don't know. But listen, Tristan, this is what we're going to do. We're going to meet in front of the house a few minutes before. I'll show you the offer, the whole package, so that way we go in together on a unified front. So that's how you do that, okay? I love that, dude. That, that I think, shows a lot, of, a lot of great, a sense of, like, awareness on, on, on our level that we're working together to get yep. this done instead of just working alone, which exactly. uh, is a big turn off. Look, uh, Sally's asking if this is recorded, will this be available later? Yep, it's on our YouTube channel, so I'll put up the link there. And then there's a question on your earlier comment when you were talking about mortgages, so let me get that one. While you're doing that, I'm gonna do a commercial for you. Shoot. That gang, listen, lab coat agent, I don't, if you're not a member, you need to become one because the amount of content that this guy is pumping out is just incredible. And because I've seen what's coming and I've seen, I've been stalking Tristan. So anyway, make sure you opt in so that way you get into that campaign so you'll always know what's happening, okay? All right. Thanks, man. Did you find that question? That. I yeah. did. Here it is. Uh, it's by, oh, that's why I couldn't find it. It's by Keller Williams. So uh, I'm not sure. The who whole, that the is, whole company is asking company. me a question. What's oh, up, Keller? How you doing, Mr. Williams? If you, had, if you had to go back and give yourself one piece of advice as a new agent, what would it be? Wow. That is a great question. Dude, I would just go back to that book that you wrote, right? Thank you. That's just, I mean, it is a good book. It is, it's a great book. So. If I, um, well, being that I, if I were an agent, I hadn't written the book yet. So if I were to go back and um, do one thing as a new agent, uh, I guess it would be to be a listing agent right out the gate. My first buyer, Tristan, I, I kid you not, man, I showed these people 26 houses, 26 houses. And when, on the 26th one, they said, you know what, we're, we're going to stay at home with my mother. So... So I, I wish I had learned that sooner, become a listing agent uh, as opposed to a selling agent. Ooh, I like that. That is, that is very true. I put a link up to your book there, Power Agent, or How to Become a Power Agent. That yeah, was the very first book I read before I got my license. So I was ready to go, dude. Yeah. People, I, I'll tell you, listen, Tristan, I'll tell you a secret. I don't, oh, I've only shared maybe three times to an audience. People that have seen me speak live and they read the book, they go, Daryl, that book, I feel like you're talking to me like I'm in one of your seminars. The truth is, Tristan, that book was first recorded in, a, in the power program, which was originally a year program. So we recorded every session for a whole year. Then we edited it down, tweaked it out, and that became the book. Oh. So that, was in, that book was in, a, in the making for a year. And that's why when people read it, they feel like I'm talking to them because yeah. I was. I was talking to a live audience. I feel like you're, you were, I mean, even before I realized there was coaches in real estate, I feel like I was being kind of told what to do, like a coach type of thing, now that I look back. So oh, cool. that, was, that was awesome, dude. All right. Uh, Keller Williams' name is Amanda Esquivel. Oh, what's up, Amanda? Yes, I know. Got it. All right. Just sorry. On, on our end, it shows Keller Williams. <laughs> And I think those are, those are for the most part, quite all the questions that I got, man. And hold, hold on, there's one more. Tammy, what's up, Tammy McElroy? If you were going to start as a listing agent today, how would you convince a seller to list with you? Okay, so wow, that's like a whole other webinar. That is, that's a whole <laughs> session, dude. That's a whole other webinar. Um, but let me give her uh, a couple of tips really quick. Is that as a new agent, they will sense, a homeowner may sense some insecurity. So make sure that um, you feel confident in your conversation. That's number one. Number two is use metaphors and nouns. I don't have time to teach this, 
but um, one of our trademarks in our training is that we don't teach memorized scripts. We teach metaphors and analogies. So whenever you're trying to explain something to somebody, you want to use a metaphor or analogy to do it. So a real quick one as an example. Mr. and Mrs. Hanahana, when you're a for sale by owner, if you, uh, it's kind of like fishing. If you pretend like going out into a lake and you throw a fishing line out into the lake to catch a fish, that fishing line is the same as marketing. So when you put a, a for sale sign in your front lawn, that's a fishing line. You may put another line out, which is like an ad on the internet. You see here in my company, Empower Realty, we don't use a fishing line. Imagine a fishing trawler going out into the ocean, throwing a big net out into the ocean and bringing all these buyers on board. Now, if you've got all these buyers on board, you can be more selective. You pick the best fish out of the pile. And then there's more to the analogy. We're running over time. But that's, that's an example, is learning metaphors and analogies. And if you're a new agent, definitely please do that trial that Daryl speaks that kind of, Because the new agents, they love, we take years off your learning curve by being a power agent. So, all right? You do, man. You do. I don't talk about this enough. By the way, because I, I just, I actually just first met you like a couple of months ago when I said, in person, yeah, yeah. But when, when I looked back, and I pulled out the book because I had a lot of notes. Uh, I looked back and I thought, wow, it did shave off a lot of time for me learning because mm -hmm. I felt like as soon as I started, I hit go and it was just like, go. I was successful my first year because I had an outline that I was following. I'm like, what did, what did he say on page? Oh, that's right. That's how you approach it. Got that's it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, that's dude, good. that's Thank you. Solid. Thank you. You're, you're an amazing person on, on this. So I love it. Everybody, please just go on. <laughs> and download the things here because this guy has so much knowledge that he's just giving you to access at all different levels. Like I looked back at the book as soon as we did our last presentation and I'm like, damn, I forgot about that, right? <laughs> so, you know, some of my students, it's funny, like some of the mega producers, of them, you know, they're bringing, raking in some good money and they start teaching, they're doing seminar, not seminars professionally, but they'll speak their, their board or they'll speak for their, their franchise. And they'll say, uh, as I've always done, and they'll say, wait a second, Daryl taught me this thing, you know, which is good. It's good when you own it, it becomes in your blood, it becomes part of you, that's, that's a beautiful thing, so. Dude, you made, me, you made me dream, by the way. I dreamt like, you know, I could, I could go this, this high. So thank you. That, that in itself was awesome. Thank you. Uh, Dimitri saying, this is gold. Yep, Dimitri, this is amazing. So we'll make sure that we're going to have, we're going to have Daryl on a lot more as long as he wants to keep on giving here. So. Well, thank you. I appreciate again, Tris, I ain't blown smoke at you. I, I know I said that about the negotiating, acknowledge the listing agent. Yeah. I'm not acknowledging you for any, except for the fact that it's true. I, 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 am, I am blown away on what you give to the industry. Really, it's just incredible. So thank you. It's an honor for me to be here. Thank you for letting Dude. me be a small piece of what you're doing for people. Lots right? of love both ways, man. All right, man. Take care. I'll talk to you Appreciate soon. Appreciate you, buddy. Thanks, Bye, everybody. everybody.